Get to know Summer Owens, speaker, consultant, and life coach, who's excited to promote her new book, 100 Lessons My Centenarian Grandmas Taught Me. Summer Owens, welcome to the Shandria Show. How are you today? Thank you. I am great. I'm great. Excited to be here. Really happy to talk to you. Oh, same here for sure. Well, let's dive on in. You've got your latest publication, 100 Lessons My Centenarian Grandmas Taught Me, has received a lot of praise. Can you share what inspired you to write this book? Absolutely. So I, um, I'm a grandma's girl and um, my grandmothers have been a very special part of my life. Um, Especially since I turned 15, I became a teen mom and I was able to beat the statistics that most teen moms face. And I really had a lot of success in my life. And it was because of the support of my grandmothers. And um, I've been really, really blessed to have them for a long time. (laughs) I had um, one live to be 102 and the other one was just short of her 98th birthday. And um, they died five days apart. So last month, it was March 29th, I lost the first one. And April 3rd, I lost the other one. And they were both transitioning uh, at the same time. And and it, it, it was very hard, <laughs> as you can imagine. It was very, very hard, but I said, you know, I'm a woman of faith. And I said, okay, God, why are you doing this to me um, right here together? And I know I'm a writer, I'm a storyteller. Um, I actually wrote books with both of them. Uh, five and six years ago and I said I'm supposed to do something with this I know I'm supposed to do this something with this I've learned a lot from them over my lifetime and I said you know with losing them um, I don't want to lose the lessons that they've taught me and I know that it can really bless some other people this is a way for me to honor them and so I got busy and it really helped me to grieve the loss um, of my grandmothers and so that's that's what inspired me to write to write this book Absolutely beautiful. I love that you have your connection to your grandmothers and that's going to live in your heart forever. You know, what do you hope readers will take away from this journey that you've taken them on? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm a speaker. Um, I'm a youth speaker. Primarily, I speak in, in um, colleges and universities and to youth groups. I have curriculum that's in schools across the country. And so I'm very passionate about young people learning how to uh, make smarter choices and to, to uh, lean into the wisdom of, of elders. And so from this specific book, I want them to honor and respect elders in their lives, the grandparents in their lives and other people who have that wisdom and to for them, young people to understand that the wisdom is there and for them to, like I said, to really respect that. Um, Cause I think we lack that a lot of young people and young being, you know, as young as me, <laughs> even at 45, I'm still young. And I think that even up to our age and even older, that we don't respect and honor the wisdom of our elders as much as we could. And so that's one thing that I really want people to take away from it is that these people have lived lives and they know more than we know and that there's so much that we should get from them, but there's also so much that we should give to them and honoring them while they're still here and then even after we leave them. For you, you talked about wisdom, right? From your grandmothers that they passed down to you. Let's talk about those values and those memories and how those lessons have influenced your journey into adulthood, both personally and professionally. Sure, and, and I'll have to show the book because I think about it. Um, what, what was really, really special that I know I ha- that was unique in the situation where I knew I had to write the book too was because um, I knew you know, you said you didn't know your paternal grandparents. I knew it was something really special for me because a lot of people don't know their grandparents or don't have that relationship with their grandparents. And I was really, really blessed to know both, both set, even my grandfathers, I lost them both a long time ago though, but I knew both of my grandmothers. I had really close relationships with my grandmothers and I had them both almost a hundred years, one over a hundred years and one almost a hundred years. And so it was so much that I did get from them. And how I actually framed the book, I speak on confidence, resilience, leadership, and life. And so in the book, I have 25 lessons on each. So 25 on confidence, 25 on resilience, 25 lessons on leadership, and 25 lessons on just living life. 
And so those are the lessons that I talk about. Um, like I said, 25 of each in the book, but they were strong women. So that's my main thing. And my brand is so what? And I teach people how to say so what to whatever challenges they face. And so now what? How to move on from those challenges. And so the, the core of the book is just about these strong women and how they endured so much in life that is instilled in me. So when I even think about my life and the things that I go through, um, that most of us do, you know, and live in our lives. I think about how they dealt with those situations and um, and and moving through life in spite of, of poverty and and sickness and challenges with children and challenges with family and all those different things and how we can deal with those. And so that's really what I really want people to take from it too. Um, those lessons on how can you be strong. And how can you get through life and all these challenges in life? And how can you live life to the fullest? And both of them, like I said, live to exactly an average of 100 years, the two of them. How can you live a long, happy, prosperous life in spite of all the challenges that will come in life? Sure. I know your grandmas are smiling and so proud of you and proud of the work that you're doing, especially in their name and in their honor. You mentioned your So What Foundation, where your mission is to empower the next generation, which is evident in your writing and your public speaking ventures. Why do you believe it's important to pass down these values and this wisdom to the younger generation? Um, uh, I believe the children are the future. <laughs> Uh, and that's true. I mean, it's it's a song and it's it may sound trite, but that's that's absolutely the truth. Is that, and we can see it in the, the decline in in our, our society. If we don't invest in, in young people and teaching them their value and self respect and helping them to be more confident, helping them to be more resilient, then we're all doomed. We all suffer when young people don't have hope and they don't they don't aspire to do great things in life. It affects us all. Um, and so I'm just really passionate about helping young people to resilient, to be more resilient, and to see they can have, do, and become anything that they want in life if they can learn how to make smart choices um, and lean into the wisdom of people who've been there, done that, um, and and want to see them succeed. And so that's why I have, I am a speaker and I speak in colleges and university. And I also established a SOA Foundation, which is based here in Memphis, um, where we work with um, youth here in Memphis. So I think that's, that's why it's important to me is because I'm a mom too. <laughs> I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother um, as well. And it's just really important to me for young people um, to have hope and to see that they can they can overcome their challenges. Sure, and what type of work does So What Foundation, what type of work are you doing? So through the So What Foundation, we have programs for youth. We have a summer camp, we have ongoing mentorship, and um, specifically it's called the Step Out Program. And it stands for self-esteem, teamwork, exposure, personal development, overcome, understand, and triumph. And so through our work, that's what we help our, our young people to do. And again, it's a summer camp. We have ongoing mentorship. And we have a Washington, D.C. exposure trip that we take our kids on. Um, why they go to Washington, D.C. is because in my memoir, which I published, um, now it's been 14 years ago, in 2010, I talk about my very first uh, flight which was to Washington, D.C., and I was pregnant. I was 15 and pregnant, and that was my first flight with my best friend and her mom. Um, and my son's first flight was to Washington, D.C. And so we take our kids to Washington, D.C. so that they can read some of the, or see some of the things they read about in the book, because they go through my curriculum. I have a, work, um, a literacy, life skills, and character education curriculum that's in a lot of schools uh, throughout the country. And so the kids in our program, the youth in our program go through that curriculum, they read my book. And so we want to show them, we pay for their, a flight, we take them to Washington, D.C., and we show them the things that they read about in the book. Um, and then all the new things that are in Washington, D.C. now, like the African American History Museum, we take them to the National Mall. But we, the point of the trip is to show them they can go places, they can do things, um, and they can see the world. And because a lot of young people don't get the opportunity to sometimes even leave their neighborhoods, right? And so we want to show them that anything is possible. They can go places, they can do things. And so that's um, what we have with the, the So What Foundation is the Step Out program where um, exposure is a key element of it and just showing them all the things that they can do and become. I love that. I love the connection to, you know, the past, connection to history and then, you know, visualization. You're bringing these 
to life, you know, taking trips for the first time or, you know, some people have never left their city, you know? Yep. And so I think that's remarkable in the work that you're doing, you know? And I think about like in today's fast paced world, you know, we're struggling to maintain connections, but a lot of us have elders right there, you know? So what advice do you give um, to anyone watching that wants to foster meaningful relationships with the older generations in their lives? Um, it's, I think that in a lot of situations, we overthink things. It's simple, just talk to them. <laughs> just talk to them, just talk to them, ask some questions. So I think the best way is to just be curious, just to be curious. And so, and I think that's why um, I have these relationships with my grandmothers and not just my, not just my grandmothers. There are lots of older people that I have great relationships with other grandmother figures in my life. It's because I'm curious. I want to know about their lives. They once were young people. They weren't once were my age. They once experienced a lot of the things that I've experienced um, and they've experienced things I've never experienced. And so I've always just been curious. And so that's where I would start is just talk to people, ask questions about their lives and not just older people, but anybody be curious about other people in their lives, not nosy, but curious. It's like, how did you deal with this? And what are the, some of the things that you've experienced in your life? And the same questions that you're even asking me, right? What lessons would you give? Ask them those questions. What, how, how do you, how did you live to be so long? Or what were some of your secrets? Um, and you know, how did you get through your relationships? Just be curious. These are people with real lives and real stories and, you know, amazing experiences. Just talk to people and, and ask questions and just be curious. Or what's one lesson from one of your grandmothers that stayed with you that has changed your outlook on life? Mm. So I have a hundred. <laughs> I have a hundred. Um, let's see. Oh, looking here that I just see choose one real quick. I think this is a good one. Um, it's care for others. It's to care for others. And so we, I think we live in a world where a lot of us are selfish, right? <laughs> A lot of us are selfish and I think there is a place for selfish because another one of the lessons is about self-care. But I think that um, caring for others and both of them were caregivers, even in careers, both of them were mothers. And so they cared for their children and then they care for the community. And so that has really lived in me. And I think that's why I, I do what I do now. I had a corporate career for about 15 years. And after I wrote my memoir, people started asking me to speak and I became a speaker. What it showed me and what made me quit my job, I had a good job, <laughs> a good corporate job, was that I saw that I could speak and I could share my story, I could share my, share my journey and it could help other people with their lives. And so everything about my life since 2013 is when I became a full-time entrepreneur has been about caring for other people and trying to say and do things to help somebody else. And so I think that, um, yeah, care for others is probably one of the best lessons that, um, that has stuck with me. What a selfless journey you've been on, which is really amazing. <laughs> Thank you. It's a career that, you know, has others in mind that, you know, makes other people better versions of themselves. And I think that's really commendable. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, I got some lightning round questions for you before we all right. today. What's your favorite book of all time? Ooh, my favorite book. So I'm, I'm looking at my bookshelf over there. I have so many books. Um, I think honestly, one of the best ones now that I'm an entrepreneur and I read it every year is called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill um, because it's about mindset and it's not just about getting money. Um, but I, I am on a quest to earn money. I think most of us are um, because of the lesson that I said I wanted to, that I really got is caring for others. I want to build wealth to care for others, my children, my grandchildren, and to continue to do and give back. So um, yeah, just as a quick answer, probably that one. <laughs> okay. Do you prefer writing in the morning or at night? At night, I'm a night owl. Um, so I'll be writing at four or five o'clock in the morning. So definitely, I don't, I don't get up there early. <laughs> I'll write all night. <laughs> How do you practice self-care? Hmm. Travel is one of the best things for me. Um, and also setting boundaries. I'll say that one first, setting boundaries and, and not letting people 
take advantage of me and take advantage of my time. And so it's a fine line because like I said, I like to care for others, um, but setting those boundaries. But one of the things that brings me the most joy and peace is traveling. And so that's why I'm really excited that in my career, I get to travel a lot. <laughs> What's the best piece of advice you've ever given someone? Hmm. I would probably say, and this is my whole mantra and the same you know, name of my business is learning how to say, so what? Learn how to say, so what? And it's based on the serenity prayer um, is that there's so many things, you know, this, everybody knows the serenity prayer. So those are, there are things that happen in life that you can do something about. And the thing that you can do something about is you should do something. Because I think we all spend too much time complaining about things that we can actually change. And so I think that's the advice that I like to give is say, so what? Things happen. I even had to say, so what? When I lost my grandmother's five days apart, it was like, so, so what? So now what, what am I supposed to do with this? And it turned into something really, really beautiful and really, really special that is going to bless a whole lot of people. And so in every situation, even the most sad, messed up situations, if you can say so what to it and look at the next step and like, okay, what am I supposed to do from with this? What am I supposed to learn from this? And how can I use this to help me or somebody else? So what? <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's not easy to say. It's not easy to say in very difficult situations, but when we can learn to start saying that, no matter what happens, we can turn it into a positive thing, no matter what it is. We can find a positive in it. Sure. What's your favorite dish? Oh, dish. I'm not, I'm not a foodie. I'm not really a foodie, but um, I love salmon. I could eat salmon every day. <laughs> so I say salmon. Coffee or tea? Wine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> forget the coffee and the tea. Wine. <laughs> oh, wine girl. Or wine, wine. Yes. <laughs> Got it. No matter what time it is. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> if you could travel to any place in the world for inspiration, where would you go? Ooh, for inspiration. I, I'd, I'd probably say the beach. I mean, I like, I love international. Ooh, no, let me change my answer. Um, back to Africa. Um, I've, I've only gone to Ghana um, and I have so many other places that I want to go in Africa, but um, I would say back to Africa, maybe anywhere in Africa till I figure out exactly where, but going home to the motherland, it was um, a very spiritual experience for me. Um, a very humbling experience, a very, um, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So, so the, yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> Last question, your, a day in your life seems incredibly busy. You're carrying the torch for others. You're motivating others. You're pushing others. You're writing for others. What's your favorite way to unwind after a long day? I like to read. Um, I like to watch documentaries um, and read. When I say read, it's nonfiction. I like to read nonfiction. I like to watch documentaries. I like real life. I like stories, people's life stories. Um, and I like a glass of wine. <laughs> so, Owens, thank you so much for being my special guest here on the Shantia Show. What's the best way to connect with you online and follow your journey? Absolutely. It was a pleasure. I'm really honored to be on your show. Uh, my website, summerowens.com, and there's links to wherever I am on social media, and I'm everywhere. But summerowens.com, and um, on my website, there's also a link to the So What Foundation's website. So, would love to connect with everybody who sees this.